When the world devolves into chaos in the wake of total atomic annihilation, nothing is safe. The thriving land of the free lost more than just the top of its line architecture, its population and its natural countryside when the bombs fell. It also lost any form of order and justice. The legally sanctioned democratic government running the United States was left in tatters and America reverted to ancient times when tribes bickered and squabbled over land and resources. However, when all hope was seemingly lost, a secretive political scientific and militaristic organization known as the Enclave rose up from the ashes of war to act as the self-proclaimed continuation of the government for the survivors in the post-apocalyptic wasteland. Sounds like the perfect solution, right? Well, we'll let you make that decision on your own. Whether or not the Enclave act for the good of the people or their own selfish goals is debatable, and throughout the course of the Fallout series, the Enclave have acted as recurring antagonists to the player. In this video, we aim to give you a brief insight into the mysterious organization with five quick but detailed facts. Fact number one, the Enclave originated from the remnants of many notable organizations in pre-war American government and military, and are one of the only surviving organizations founded before the Great War came to its explosive conclusion. The founding members of the Enclave were in the no individuals within the US government who had accepted the inevitability of the use of nuclear arms prior to the day it became a reality. From the very beginning, the Enclave was founded on an elitist basis. These apocalypse foreseers knew that nuclear war would devastate the majority of the population so they aim to preserve America's most important individuals in order to rebuild civilization when the end times came. Most of the United States' most influential people, including the president, were now in on the Enclave's prudent plans. Close to the end of the war, natural resources were scarce, and the Poseidon oil rig out at sea far into the Pacific Ocean was going to act as the primary headquarters for the president and Enclave members when the bombs fell. From this rig, the US government could continue to fight communism and work on reconnecting with the other Enclave survivors on the mainland. Unfortunately, communications to the mainland were lost, and the Enclave on the oil rig became the last bastion of hope for returning order and liberty to the radiation-ravaged land of the free. Fact number two, there was more to the creation of vault tech vaults than simply acting as fallout shelters to the lucky few able to secure a position. The vaults were to act as a variety of experiments masterminded by the US government. The plan for the VIPs of the Enclave was not to survive and rebuild here on Earth, but actually to retreat to the oil rig before attempting to colonize another planet altogether. The Enclave's vision of post-war America was so pessimistic that they actually considered a lifeless planet more habitable. The vaults instead aimed to test a variety of things including racial relations in small environments in Vault 15, the development of long-term underground communities in Vault 101, and the impact of controllable levels of radiation in Vault 12, and even the effects of cryogenically induced sleep in Vault 111. We can't say for sure whether the spacecraft intended for this mission was destroyed or if the plan was simply discarded, but the Enclave eventually decided to focus their goals on resettling on Earth, operating out of the Poseidon oil rig in the Pacific. Fact number three, the Enclave bided their time on the oil rig until the opportune moment to re-emerge onto the mainland. They monitored radiation levels from afar and set their minds on developing their technology before returning to the States, and it was this eventual return that led to the events of Fallout 2 and Fallout 3. One of the Enclave's first actions on the mainland in California was to study the FEV virus which they found at the Mariposa military base. Several teams were sent out, one of which was this towering secret service agent known as Frank Horrigan, and they recruited local miners to excavate vats of the virus. These miners exposed to the fumes ended up mutating into a second generation of super mutants and they overthrew their Enclave overseers, seizing their weapons and tech before being sealed inside the base by retreating Enclave troopers. Despite this hiccup, the Enclave still got the FEV samples. In order for their scientists to develop a serum for the virus, the Enclave kidnapped the entire Arroyo tribe and all of the residents of Vault 13. It became overwhelmingly obvious why this supposed continuation of the government was actually more akin to being the main antagonist for the people of the post-war world. Fact number four, the failure of the Enclave's grand scheme. Just as the Enclave planned to cleanse the mainland of all its inhabitants, the Chosen One saved the kidnapped test subjects and destroyed the Enclave's headquarters. The remaining enclave on the mainland were obliterated by the Brotherhood of Steel and the New California Republic, though a few remnants made it out alive, including a significant portion of the remaining personnel who were taken east by Autumn Sr. to the ruins of Washington DC at Raven Rock to recuperate. You can also still see small signs of enclave influence in the west coast. For example, there is the Enclave Remnants, a group of elderly retired enclave members formerly known as the Devil's Brigade. Their lead officer, Gannon Sr., also has a son who can become a follower to the courier. 
His name is Arcade Ganon. Fact number five, when you have an organization compromised exclusively of the greatest leaders, generals, and intellectuals of the pre-war world, and a somewhat lacking moral compass, it's astounding what technological feats you can accomplish. As mentioned earlier, the Enclave moved their most valuable people to the Poseidon oil rig to protect them from the adverse effects of nuclear fallout, and they spent a significant amount of time staying as far away from the mainland as possible. They waited on their oasis in the Pacific, surrounded by elite scientists with a horde of America's best inventors and worked on ensuring that they were the most advanced power in the United States before making their move. As a result, the Enclave were able to boast the very best in power armor, vertebrates, energy weapons, and even biological weapons in the form of the FEV Super Serum. The Tesla armor is one of their greatest feats alongside iBots, plasma weapons, and much more. The Enclave pioneered in all of these creations thanks to the extensive access to preserved pre-war materials and technology. For an example of the might of their technology, look no further than Frank Horrigan. Decked out in personally modified advanced power armor subjected to FEV exposure until he became a gigantic super mutant. This guy was a walking tank. Subscribe to Fudge Muppet for more content like this and give the video a like for the Enclave. If you're a fan of our Fallout content, show us some support. With Skyrim Special Edition out, Fallout has fallen out of the spotlight a bit, but if you want more, let us know down below. Also, be sure to follow us on Twitter for a more personal look at Fudge Muppet and the ability to interact with us directly. As always, thanks so much for watching. I'm Scott, and I'll see you in the next one.